So um, I just want one more quote from you, and I'm not sure how I'm going to get it. <laughs> Which, yeah, I think I know what it is. <laughs> do you, go ahead. You know what it is. Yeah. It's, I want my paintings to look like fresh sushi, not well done beef. That is what I want to put at the very beginning of the interview. I love that quote. It. Thank you. I love analogies. I love a metaphor anyway, and a food metaphor always works. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's I all just, about the food. <laughs> yes. And and I love the I love the humor of that as well. So yes. I, I have to say that quote is not original with me. I heard someone else say it probably about 25, 30 years ago, and it just stuck with me. Well, we'll we'll keep that tradition going. Because today we have an interview with Karen Werner, who's a wonderful still life painter, and all of her information will be in the description below. So you can go to all of her different social media platforms. Let's get started. And please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you once again to Karen, who was willing to do this with me twice because we had some technical issues. <laughs> um, Karen Warner is here with me today and she's been patient to do this with me more than once because of technical difficulties. And this mug is just just getting by with the technology. So thank you for talking with me again. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, of course. And we can't be in Karen's studio, so I'm, uh, which is unfortunate, but that is, that is a technical issue. Uh, and I'm gonna put lots of pictures, you know, her, her still life pictures here, and also all her information will be in the description below. So you can go and look at her Instagram, her website, her, all the things. I'll, I have, I have them all. Okay. So Karen, I wanted to start the, the interview with asking why still life? Because we have a portrait artist of the year program and a landscape artist of the year program. I think I have my own personal reasons for why I think, um, still life is important, but you must have considered this over time. I sure have. Um, I love still life. Um, it's accessible. Everyone can do it. Everyone has objects that they can paint and painting from life. It's hard to explain how much better your work will be if you paint from life and better your learning will be if you paint from life rather than from, from photos. So either outdoor and plein air or painting still life in your home. Still life is a great teacher because you're dealing with design, uh, shapes, values, color, mixing, um, all the things. So it's a great, it's a great teacher. Yeah, um, I would say a, a contemporary painter, Carol Marine, was a big oh. influence yeah. on my work. Yeah. Um, I took a workshop with her back in 2010. Oh. And that that was really um, a dynamic change to my work, my work practice. Um, so, yeah, Carol Marine, uh, even Chong Wong, I took a workshop with him also, uh, but mostly the contemporary masters. And a lot of people, contemporary masters who are well-known painters, and paint and plein air. They also occasionally do still lifes. So I just think it's a really good practice for any painter to yeah. develop versatility. So, so you have a lot of practice in setting up those still lifes. I love looking at your Facebook posts because you'll have the still life and then sometimes we get to see the progression and then the final piece. How, and I hate it when people ask this question because it's a stupid question. How much time does it take you to set up a still life? Because I know it has nothing to do with how much time, but, oh, you know, uh, you must be very accustomed. It varies. It varies. It varies? Um, yes, it varies greatly. Sometimes I spend a half an hour. Other times I might spend an hour and a half. Okay. Um, and it depends on my mood and whether I can find something that excites me. 
Yeah. I keep looking. I I liken it to a, a hen that's pecking for food. I'm I'm pecking around the house and the yard and my studio for something that excites me, something yeah. that has a little bit of newness to it. Sometimes that helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can understand that. Thinking about design, uh, design principles mm -hmm. as I'm arranging mm -hmm. and thinking about the source of light, the direction of light, how the shadows connect, the color harmony. There's a lot to consider when you're setting it up. So you just keep moving it around until you get something that's exciting that through your viewfinder looks like a painting. Yeah, it's really amazing to me how um, you can, uh, it, you know, I have to the side the, the um, photographs I'm going to insert into this video and you don't repeat. And that's, that's incredible to me. I'd almost like how it, uh, but, but you're a real artist. So you're looking at it with fresh eyes all the time. Um, the last time we talked, um, I wanted, uh, I told you, I called you kind of a snap and crackle painter because you have a heightened color that you achieve that is more bright and has more contrast that I know comes out of the tube. And you described how you thoughtfully make that happen. You know, purposely, that's what you're doing. Maybe you could tell us a bit about that. Yeah, a couple of things. There are some strategies to keep your color clean. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is I never mix more than three colors together. I use a limited palette, so I don't use black in my color mixing. I use uh, complementary colors to change the intensity of a color rather than black or rather than earth tones. So I'm able to keep my color fresh that way. I lay it down and leave it alone. That's another way to keep your color fresh. So you're not and, rubbing. You're not rubbing and blending. Right. Keeping it clean is leaving it alone. But also um, considering what the color is next to, mm -hmm. either uh, a complementary color scheme that makes, say, for instance, a yellow really pop. You might have a muted violet near the yellow that'll make the yellow look even more yellow. Yeah. Uh, and then using neutrals to really emphasize your high chroma colors. Mm -hmm. And with the color, it, it, it really has a vibrancy and a life to it. Yeah, that's what I, I really, one of the things that really impresses me about your painting is the things you don't paint. What I mean is not the things between the objects because um, you have such, what, if I squint my eyes and only look at the negative spaces, they're not neutral at all. There's a lot of color in your neutrals and Ooh, somehow you. manage to, um, almost like stick you know i think of it like a formula racing like it's really high speed racing and there's not a lot of room for error but if you hit it keep hitting it right each you know those corners right each time you're going to be able to accelerate through the next part of the race and your painting is just exquisite in those choices um, thank you that comes with practice yeah um the more you practice the more paintings you paint the more efficiently you can paint and you're able to get it right the first time, lay it down and leave it alone. But it only comes with practice. Yeah, good point. Okay, one more. okay. So maybe you could tell viewers where from Portrait Arts of the Year is heavily, they heavily use technology. And I understand why they're 10 feet away from the portrait of uh, the sitter. You're not gonna be able to see eyelashes from 10 feet away. Right. But what is your observation when it comes to, or what would you tell people who kind of tend to work from photographs and not from life for whatever valid reasons, what are the adjustments that, that you see your students need to make when it comes, when they've come from working a lot from photographs? What are the, I'm asking what the bad habits working from photos is, or do you know, since you don't do that very well? Oh, oh, I do. Um, Photographs lie to us. The human eye is able to see so much more than a camera does. So one of the things is shadows that are too dark, yeah. shadows that are colorless, 
because in a photo, a shadow will look almost black. Yeah. It won't have any color in it. And it, and another thing that it, about the shadows is it does not gradate. But in real life, shadows gradate from being darker, yeah. uh, right under the object or right next to the object to mm -hmm. lighter as they go out. Yeah. So you see that in real life, but you may, most times you won't see it in a photo. Yeah. So um, the other thing I would say is do a little experiment, mm -hmm. set up a still life, a simple object and light it uh, from one side and observe the colors in the cast shadows, Alert, observe the colors as they, ch as they go on the object from the lit side of the object to the dark side of the object and how they shift and how they still maintain chroma from, from the lit side to the dark side. Then take a picture of it with your camera and look at the picture. It's completely different. So painting from life is such a better teacher yeah. than painting from photos. Yeah. And also when we paint from photos, we tend to be a slave to the photo. We put in way too many details. We make everything way too perfect. And it kind of just saps the life out of your painting. If yeah. you are a slave to the photo and you're trying to make it exactly like the photo. Uh, when you're painting from life, you're interacting with that actual object, the subject that you are painting. You have a connection to it. You're seeing it differently and you're feeling differently about it. So it's such a better teacher. Um, and you put some of yourself into your painting when you're painting from life. You're, you're able to be more expressive and, and communicate your experience of this thing that you're painting rather than painting from a photo. You don't relate as the same way with a photo as you do with a real object. Wow, that is really beautifully stated. Wow. I, Thank you. It's hard to explain. You almost have to just experience it yourself. Maybe you could just describe what your selling strategy, how you changed from small paintings to what you do now, which is a little bit of a hybrid of smaller paintings and larger paintings to, um, to sell paintings. Okay. Well, um, it's hard to know what to say about that because I don't feel like I have a good handle on uh, marketing or, you know, but I'll say this. Yeah. I don't paint to sell. Oh. I paint. Yeah, there you are. I love the challenge of painting mm -hmm. and I love the satisfaction of creating something that I love the satisfaction of creating a painting uh, that that I'm happy with in the end. Yeah. Um, so if we sell, it, that's like icing on the cake. Yeah. I would say paint for yourself, paint for your own growth. Mm -hmm. So my last question is your big why. Uh, I always ask. Why. Yeah, because I always ask people, everyone that I've interviewed. They're very highly skilled at what they do. So they're, it's not about everybody, you know, wants their art to improve because, you know, that's fun. But, um, but then behind that, there has to be another why. So if someone was to say to you, what, Karen, why, why, why get up and paint tomorrow? What is the big, what is your why? Well, <laughs> that's a good question, Joe. And it's really uh, a deep question. I know. I feel like I was made to paint. I know that I, God gave me gifts from childhood. I've always loved color and drawing and observation of the natural world around me. And so when I paint, I feel like I am exercising the gifts that I've been given. Hmm. So it feels right to me to be painting. Wow, that feels feels like a gift and a responsibility when you you. Pray. It is. Wow. It, it's both. There's a verse in the Bible that says, "Neglect not the gift that is within thee." 
Oh, yeah. And um, and I love that. Mm -hmm. um, it it feels right to, and it feels like I am working on my purpose, part of my purpose here. Yeah. Uh, when I paint. Oh, uh, I. That's so it it's yeah. very satisfying, and I think if I if I wasn't doing what I was meant to do, mm -hmm. it, I wouldn't have that satisfaction. Yeah, it would be that it would be a job. This yes. Is, yeah. It, it doesn't feel like a, a job. It feels like a, uh, uh, maybe this is too high flutin. It's a joy. It's a privilege. It's a, it's a <laughs> gift. The practice of doing it is a gift in itself. It's, you know, I, I don't really make a living from painting, mm -hmm. but I recognize that because my husband is still is working, he is supporting us. Yeah. Um, I feel so blessed to have the time and the space and the resources to be able to paint. So uh, in that way, I feel responsible for, I've been given so much to be able to do this and I'm very grateful. I know, if the, I know a few professional artists who do make a living at it full time, but, but by teaching, not by selling original artwork, because right. only, I think it's only like 3% of the population buys original artwork. Wow. But there's almost like a shame in it in some ways. And I, I, I just love your attitude, which is celebrate the gift, celebrate the opportunity. And then if something beyond that happens, well, great. And if it doesn't, it, it's, it's, an, it's not consequential. Another gratifying thing is when you have developed your skills to the point where others want your work and, are, and they enjoy your work. They, they tell you how much they love the painting that they purchased. And you might get also opportunities to paint commissions for people of meaningful things like one example is I painted a, a cat for a man who his cat had died. Mm -hmm. And so how it, that had a lot of meaning for, for that man that I was able to capture that cat in paint. Or recently I did a commission of a, a lighthouse, a lifeguard stand on a beach where a couple was recently married. Oh, so they wanted a painting of where they had, and it, and then another one where I painted an old structure in Claremont where someone, oh, this is where we were married, they said, you know, and uh, so the painting had meaning for them and made them happy. Um, so that's a gift too, yeah. being able to paint something that has great significance to someone else. Well, yeah, that's it's the really ultimate good. sharing because it's uh, even if, whether it's that you decide to give something as a gift or because someone's purchased something, it, it is a more kind of intimate transaction than say um, providing a, a service. Oh boy, that, you know, I gotta put the word privilege in front of me because um, I forget sometimes and think, um, think, well, I need to paint because I don't want to get rusty or, you know, don't let your paints get wet. But I, you know, when you talked, when we first talked, you talked about how you were a school teacher and I, I taught as well. And, you know, waiting for that opportunity to, to the place where you're financially and at an age or in circumstances where you can work full time. And there are times when I have to admit, I take it for granted and I think, oh, man, I don't really feel like it today. And then I think back to my working life and when I think, oh, I can't, I just someday, someday I'll, you know, have the time, you know, to, to mm -hmm. do that. But uh, it's, it's funny how it's, Staying in that grateful place is a, is such a such a practice, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, yes, it, it sure is. Um, I just want one more quote from you, and I'm not sure how I'm going to get it. <laughs> is... I think I know what it is. Do you, go ahead. You know what it is. Yeah. It's I want my paintings to look like fresh sushi, not well done beef. That is what I want to put at the very beginning of the interview. I love that quote. It Thank you.
I love analogies. I love a metaphor anyway, and a food metaphor always works. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's I all just, about the food. <laughs> yes. And and I love the I love the humor of that as well. So yes, I, I have to say that quote is not original with me. I heard someone else say it probably about 25, 30 years ago, and it just stuck with me. Well, we'll we'll keep that tradition going because I think it's I think it's going to show up in a recap here here and there for me because I'm kind not of... overworking. Yes, and and painting life helps with that rather than a photo. Well, thank you so much for doing this again. And of course, I will edit it and, and give you a preview. There are some video glitches, but um, let's, we'll see if we can edit around them. I, I think you were right to try it again. I think I, the sound is definitely better. I think having the Good. sound consistent, even though there might be a lag in the video, is still better than what we, we, what we came up with before. Good. <laughs> I hope. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Karen. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, Joe. You're so okay. sweet to do this. Oh. I really appreciate you thinking of me. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Okay. We'll see you on the internet and soon uh, with a video, I hope. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you, Joe. Have a great day. Yeah. Bye.